What's up, guys? Destin Legary here, and I'm here with uh, Anthony. Hello. And a uh, special guest, Dean Hall, the guy who made this. Hello. How are you guys today? I, I, uh, fantastic. Uh, even better because we're playing a, uh, a version of DayZ that, that we've never been privy to before. That's uh, right. Yeah, speaking of people who are here, uh, how's my buddy doing? What Do you have a name for uh, this guy? Dog. 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 <laughs> oh. Actually, Dog One. Yeah. Dog One. How's it going, Dog so, One? So, I mean, so this is something oh, that, that you've kind of been wanting to do for a long time. I mean, bring in some sort of companionship to the games. Uh, we, we've kind of, I know you've talked about before having dogs, um, but the dogs seem like they could be really cool because they provide companionship, but like everything in DayZ, they come at a cost. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously having a dog means that it's an additional mouth to feed. They, I, they have their own life that we actually have to worry about. Which yeah. I think, I don't know, I mean, I think that that's really cool, but it also is, it really scares me because I'm, I'm afraid I'll become very attached to my dog, which I guess uh, that's kind of the point. Yeah. Um, so I guess, Destin, it, do we have to give the dog any special commands to get it to follow us, or will it just naturally follow I said, us? I said follow me. Uh, yeah. You might click speed up. Yeah, if you click speed up, you'll hear him, her whistle. If the dog's a distance away, you'll whistle. Otherwise, if it's close, um, you, you'll just, you know, silently tell it that. Oh my He's God. coming. Come on, dog one. <laughs> Hurry it up. Yeah, I think that should be his permanent name now. It's just dog one, no matter what. So I guess the, the big area of development with the dogs, the big problem at the moment and the reason it's not released is because the dogs aren't attacking or being attacked by zombies. So I, I need to put the states in that make that happen. I see. I mean, to me, that would make a big difference only because... Man, if the dog can come under threat, it, it, it makes me so much more afraid for my dog. Yeah. Like having to actually worry about whether my dog is going to be attacked. I don't know, as a pet owner in real life. We certainly didn't want the dogs to be required uh, for the players to advance. You know, that's kind of, I guess, the big aim with Daisy is to, you know, it's the whole tagline is, you know, this is Daisy, this is your story. So we want to have many different ways to play it. So. We don't want it oh. to be required for players to have a dog in order to succeed. Right. You know, I imagine there'll be many players who what? have no need him. to have a... Yeah, I think you wounded him. Oh, gosh, Justin. Players that will have no need to ever have a dog. Yeah, I mean, for some people, I imagine they won't even want it just because the idea... Of, like, for me, honestly, when, you, when, when I learn about the dogs, I kind of almost don't want one just because the thought of losing the dog really bothers me. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, thanks for the Makarov that I just wasted. Um, wow, all the ammunition gone. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I mean the thing. Of, I mean the Makarov is such a cool like little gun in real life, but man, in Daisy, I would say that it, it is a very false sense of security. The yeah. Makarov. Nineteen like, eleven. It, it One makes, thing that I like about the Makarov is the fact that it has very bad dispersion, uh, so that you know the rounds go all over the place. Yeah. And uh, what I want to do is when we get durability in, that will be one thing that affects the quality of the weapon. So if you pick up a very good weapon, you know, you'll have low dispersion. But if you pick up, a, you know, a badly, you know, a damaged and old weapon, uh, it will have bad dispersion. So I think uh, these are exciting things that, that we can, you know, that we can do. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, I, I think that guns in general in Daisy have always been something that, Whenever I can, I avoid. I see a lot of the really high-level players oh, running. You've, you've speed up your game. Running around with uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> running around with machine guns and all that. But to me, I've never understood why. Like, like t I mean, I get that you would take it because it's security against other players. Yeah. But for me, I always put away my gun when I when I don't see players around, and I'm just all about the axe, the melee weapon. Yeah. Um, Me melee is uh, an area that we also want to really develop uh, oh, this quite heavily, um, and. It may make it you know a lot more inside the experience at the moment it really is a, a total hack uh, but it's something we've got on the card same with crossbow we've got a new crossbow coming as well um that's i think done by a, a very talented russian artist who works at bis uh, um our ceo marek he, he loves crossbows as well he has a crossbow um and so he's <laughs> in real life in real life yeah <laughs> so don't mess with him um or he will take you out
are all the, are a lot of the guys that are working on Arma and stuff, do they actually all have a familiarity with weapons and that sort of thing? Uh, there are quite a few guys who are. Um, there's one guy, uh, his name's Moth, that's what everyone calls him, at the Bruno office. I hope he don't mind me, doesn't mind me mentioning this, but he's uh, really into, uh, just as a hobbyist, just, you know, going out to the range and stuff and firing. Me too. Mm. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's a... I don't know. People sometimes get weird about guns, but I've always been, uh, I was raised with, with guns and all that, so it never really bothered me. Um, so, so Dean, Dean what, can, what can we do uh, with a dog besides uh, you know, making sure? And uh, well, the big thing at the moment is tracking, and at the moment with this build, what I've enabled is that uh, you can track animals. So if you select track, the dog will look around and he's found an animal up there. So you probably want to go slow down, so tell him to slow down if you scroll your mouse button. Slow down. And you'll see he'll start walking now. So you can use slow down and speed up to change the speed the dog will go at. Ah. Uh, and nice you can get him to run to even faster. Food. You can get him to totally sprint as well if you go fully speed up. So he will run and he will find a nearby animal, lead you to it, and then you can kill the animal and and that oh, well, you could if you if you had rounds left in your mouth. <laughs> I was gonna say, well then did that become so much more important if you have to actually feed the dog and take care of it? Um, uh, and I guess you, oh, you won't. Oh wow, you found one. Yeah, so you won't see um, in this game, obviously. Uh, but I've never seen over it. time, the dog uh, will increase in its skill. So if you tell the dog to stay, like at the moment, it will stay. But it's not super loyal. So like a normal dog, after 30 <laughs> seconds, it's gonna start he will start following you again. He'll come and try and find you. So that's the idea: is rather than having you leveling the dog, to have the dog organically grow and develop in the game so that so that the it's not an immersion breaker bringing up some ui mm -hmm. yeah i know that uh, uh that you'd also talk to us about maybe wanting to have the dog kind of learn familiarity with yeah. you and other players as well over time just yeah. like it would in real life yeah so you you obviously can't see that in this game because there's you know there's only one you're only running around but the that's the thing so the dog's behavior changes depending on who's around it Dustin, we should uh, head down the road towards Cherno. Yeah, that's where I'm Even going. Even though that's usually a disaster. I, In general, <laughs> playing the game, I would never tell anyone Well, to check inside. Cherno. Did you find anything inside that petrol station there? I was just losing the zombie by running oh, through right. there, so I'll look now. A oh, wire kit. Wire. Maybe I'll grab that. Sure. Give me that in mind now. And uh, I guess I'll take... Scrap. Oh, scrap I'm that. really looking forward to expanding the vehicle construction side of it that's an easy win like the underground construction as i don't think you can get out there you have to go around it um the underground construction is very ambitious but the vehicle uh, repairing and construction mechanic is a lot more that's something that we know we can definitely do so um that's something that i'm really looking forward to having in and i think it will be an integral part of daisy as well um so you know we had talked uh I, I talked to you before about how, you know, in the in the eventual standalone stuff, you know, a lot of the, the UI stuff that we see on the side is kind of stuff you want to, you know, ideally there would be no UI and you'd be kind of yeah. just deep in the experience. Um, when DayZ does become a standalone, though, sight and sound, I imagine, those things are still really going to matter yeah. to the way it plays, right? I, I think they're... Oh, you mean the visibility and that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the tough one. That's the one UI indicator that I wonder whether or not we can or right. cannot lose. Uh, and actually, it's one of the areas I'm quite proud of. I think it's something that, that hadn't been done in Armour before, so I read a lot of values. Like, I think people don't realize the math and stuff that, that that's involved in calculating those. You know, it, it bases it on the stance, uh, the speed that you're moving in, the terrain you're on, the time of day, the ambient light. I was going to say, I've noticed that if, if you hit a shadow, it actually yeah. will change it dynamically, which is... Yeah, I mean, that t alone to me boggles my mind a little bit. I would love to do a lot more with it. Uh, and that's why hug hugging the edges of buildings, you'll find, helps a lot. Um, yeah, so I tend to move around and you know, use use buildings. I'd, I'd like to be able to develop that a lot more than it currently is. Yeah, I mean, I could see what you mean by that. It's like, because uh, in real life, if you were in a crazy apocalypse where people are shooting, you would probably hug cover Yeah. a lot. Oh, man. Just in... Oh, yeah, you can go in those buildings there, but you're probably not going to find their industrial buildings, so you're really going to need to head uh, onto, out onto the road there and uh, okay. and head, uh, head in. Actually, there's a building up on the hill behind you as well. 
How do you decide how you, how to kind of like populate the buildings with items? Well, I, I guess the overall principle of being intuitive uh, was the main thing. So to your left there, see that oh, wooden no, building there? Which one? Um, that one? Yeah, no, the, the wood uh, left one. one more. Yeah, the, the wood one to the left. Oh, okay. The yeah. dark, the dark. Uh, yeah, with dark the dark gray, gray roof. And if you get in um, fast, you might be able to find. Uh, so you want to head left more? Yeah. Oh no, there it goes. Yeah, that one. Yeah, you're right. You might be able to get in and out if you can see if there's any oh, ammunition God. in. This is not good. Oh, it does. Oh, there's tons of stuff in here too. No, there is. There's a gun. Another macro. Wow, you. That, this is probably that. Nobody ever gets this lucky in Daisy. Hex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kill it. Oh, Dustin. Oh, no, it's okay. Dustin. They're just hanging out. Did I just waste all my ammo? Yeah, you did. That was it. Oh, boy. That's what I'm saying. Whisper kick. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> you fell outside. When you recover from that, you might wake up outside, which With broken really legs. We'll You're see. Not right yet. now, they're just drinking your blood. Be outside. Oh. oh no! Stand up. They're still drinking your blood. They're just laughing it up. It's part One of, of them's got broken legs. <laughs> oh. Well. Well, I can I can uh, bleed out here, and then uh, we'll join you again when I'm. I can't not believe dead. how I, I still I can't believe how accepting people are of the fact that I disable entire user input. While, um, to me, it makes <laughs> sense. I, I understand. I'm knocked out. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this is me being knocked out. That's just what it is. But when I think about it, like, if a mainstream mainstream game did that, like, <laughs> oh, you would freak out probably. It's true. I, I guess you're right. I get freaked out when I can't skip a cutscene. Yeah. I'm like, let me skip the intro. But people uh, are like, oh, okay. So we click restart here. Okay. You are dead. Good job, Justin. All right, let's try that again. Um. Yeah, what we're we talking about, I think minimalist UI, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Stop but for running. me, it doesn't really bother me that, that you take away control, just because uh, uh, I think it actually does make it a little bit more immersive. Like, but you're a lot of games in general don't have the uh, the kind of I don't know if I want to say I don't know balls or whatever, but they they typically wouldn't do that just because it's really asking a lot of them. Like a so the old EverQuest games, for instance, when you used to get blinded by a blind spell, it would actually m make your whole screen go black. So. Oh man, did we lose? But we lost our dog. No, he's still. No, Dustin, that's not a dog. Did we lose our dog? No, you should have your dog. That's a zombie. Try call. Oh, here there he comes. He is. You oh. just need to tell him to speed up. Probably he'll just be like trotting along. Get over here, dog one. <laughs> no, this is dog two. Yeah, <laughs> we oh, died yeah. now. We don't <laughs> we know the dog died. died. Don't say that, Anthony. You're bleeding as well. You oh, got geez. red on you. <laughs> <laughs> some some kid uh. said that to me at rest. Uh, it was pretty funny, like it's a, you know, uh, door, uh, Shaun of the Dead quote. Oh, laugh. you've got red on you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the, the, the bleeding mechanic, it's like I was saying to you before. I mean, I understand that it's like, well, first off, you're, you know, you're a game designer. You're not necessarily the type of person that's going to figure out the best way to handle that yeah. initially. But it gets the job done in the sense that it indicates that you're bleeding very apparently. Like, yeah. you know, that's the thing is in an authentic game, if you don't have the ability to actually feel pain, it's like, how do you get across the and fact that you're bleeding? The, the big thing is you can see that someone's bleeding on someone else. And what we really don't want is the uh, the style of, um, you know, you see icons flashing over people's heads and stuff like that. Because Daisy's all about immersion. Oh, Destin. I'm so good at this game. <laughs> Sarcasm. The nice thing is that you still have ammo. Well, I, we're, we are kind of running like a, like a dummy. Um, but yeah, I agree. The immersion factor of Daisy is 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 definitely really important. Yeah, I, I think that of everything except the visibility and audibility, I think we're going to be able to get rid of all those other indicators. You see when your character's cold because your character will start shivering. Uh, you got a zombie up on your right. Yeah, I'm going to start crawling. Uh, so play it the way you're one to. Um, behavior I've been uh, developing with the dog, but it's not in this build yet, is. When the dog gets loyalty goes up with you over time and it gets better and better, eventually you can look at a house and say, you know, clear the house and do like what happened in I Am Legend. You know, when the dog goes in, checks it's clear, comes out and barks and stuff like that. Oh man, that would be amazing, just to be able to, to uh, not have to put myself at horrible risk all the time. Plus, it'd be interesting if you know the dog, if zombies will attack the dog, right? Too, you're potentially putting your dog at risk yeah. to have them go do these things. 
especially if you were risking like a dog that's super loyal to you that you've built up yeah. over a long period of time. Um, those now are, you need to uh, do your little uh, what was it? Whisper kick. Whisper, whisper kick. kick up the whisper stick. Kick. <laughs> this is the stuff that's uh, the kind of stuff that's been fixed in Generous Plus. No more whisper kicks. Oh, you found yourself a uh, ghillie, ghillie suit. suit? Ghillie yeah. suit. Yeah. Hacks. <laughs> Actually, I've never seen someone be this lucky in game. <laughs> and the first time we played, uh, I got the very first time ever. I yeah. got a gun, and Anthony was like, "What? How yeah. does that?" Happen? Oh, you can't wear it because you're a chick. Uh, and he got he got a he got a and then another time I watched him play, he got. Like the huge what back, like the uh, Alice pack and a Gilly Okay, suit. your dog is, <laughs> the dog is heedless. He's really loyal. So it's a work in progress. That's yeah. the thing people have to remember. Um, but, you know, I know that, that you're wanting to roll out the dogs going on forward. Is it also something that you, I mean, it's, it's also something that you want to roll out with the standalone? Absolutely, yeah. So the uh, that's what's good about having the mod. It's kind of a test bed. So there are a lot of unanswered questions that people have legitimately raised um, for dogs. So we need to um, yeah we need to answer those with the mod. So you've got a couple of industrial buildings coming up. There's one on your left uh, behind that fence uh, over here. Yeah, and between those two red trees, you can see. So to your left more, your other left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in in there. Oh, way yeah. over there, okay. But watch out, because there's probably zombies in here. So like I was saying before, this is actually the original start area for the Daisy hipsters out there. They'll remember this. There'll be like a couple of hundred people in the so world. So you used to start this. really close to Cherno? Yeah. The idea was this is a really good uh, spot to start testing from. I don't think you can go on that one. I think you have to go around uh, uh, yeah. the other side. Yeah, and it's the next one over. Yeah, this one, yeah. I think, if you open that door. Nope. 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 Okay, I look really stupid now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's one in there. I can open this gate, probably. Ah! Oh, Dustin. <laughs> I <laughs> break my legs. <laughs> that was worth it, though. Uh, okay, no, I think it must be one further in. Yeah. Um, yeah, moments like that are always kind of unintentional. I uh, know, if you go back to the road, back to that gate, and go through that gate. Oh, I see it. Oh, yeah, that one over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was one house too early. Destin, Just watch out because there'll be zombies. Don't run on the patio. Here. You make so much sound. I'm already pretty visible because I'm crouch walking. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You got zombie one zombie chasing. over there. Where? Uh, to your left. And, oh and, yeah, I can uh, see um, him in the field there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you're adopting a good tactic. This is what I do. So I tend to run on the grass areas, like uh, crouch, and then I'll cross. Um, I treat uh, roads and that as rivers. So they're like rivers to me. There, I need to do a prepared cross, and uh, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I I totally get what you mean. Like uh, roads in this game are are actually the most dangerous, like yeah. terrain to go around on. Just so if you go left here, go. Th uh, you can check that side, but I generally check this side first. Yeah. yeah so that building there. Oh, that was scary. Yeah, like so you got a zombie walking behind the transformer. Then yeah. you can see. I mean, how much your visibility and sound went up as you crossed over that. Yeah. yeah. Like crazy. Can I open this one? Yep. yep. Well, and, no. da -da 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 -da. and oh my short. god! And that was when you're lucky. You probably don't want to shoot him. Yeah, you probably just want to. Yeah, run. Like he's in there. If you go so. right through that gate, and then go to the other side, and you can go inside both of those buildings. So that door there. Huh? Hello. At least a bandage and some. I'm gonna need ammo. that. So one thing, I guess, to you know, because I, I realize I've been telling people kind of the same thing in interviews again and again. So one thing we're looking at doing is is expanding on you find the types of ammunition instead of finding like Lee Enfield mag or whatever. Sometimes you'll find magazines, but most of the time you'll find like 5.56 ammo or you know or, or whatever, and your different caliber ammo. So uh, that way you can then craft your own magazines from that. So you you build up. Mm. Oh, so you actually get enough ammo to yeah. to make a magazine. Oh, wow. And so that's, that's getting... So it's a little bit more realistic then. So you find, like, boxes of ammunition, and then you can use that to create uh, the mag or clip that you need. I think my dog's stuck in that house. It's okay. He'll, he'll eventually find you. Uh, and so will that zombie. I don't like this guy. You probably want to avoid conflict with him. Oh, a little late. <laughs> Uh, also, Die. one thing that we're doing with the standalone I've been looking at is uh, a bow as well, in, in addition to the crossbow. I would love that. 
I mean, there's something. Uh, what the? Bow to always to me always felt like the the world's best uh, survival weapon. There. You're on your last mag. <laughs> yeah. Basically, we're the world's we're so the world's loaded. worst shot. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, I think the winning strategy in Daisy is to really conserve your ammunition. So I will normally run around uh, and avoid zombies where possible, uh, and only fire when I need to. I'm pretty sure Dustin has attracted like two zombies yeah. already. <laughs> While you were saying that, I attracted 15 zombies. So up in front of you, if you head left, uh, you'll have to cross over the road though. Is that, um, is that where the medical tents are? Uh, no, you're heading into Cherno now. Actually, your best bet will be to leg it to the fire station. If you run uh, parallel to this road, so don't run on the road, run parallel to it, and you'll eventually come across the supermarket. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, the supermarkets, uh, I usually find nothing there, but it actually is a great place to find dead players in the regular yeah. game because people constantly kill each other right outside I the I think some of the most really intense moments have come in supermarkets, oh, and yeah. I really like that. Like, I think that that's uh, also quite realistic as well. Oh, like yeah. you, you, usually your fatal there. incidents come from like uh, airports and stuff, but definitely the intense moments come from supermarkets. There it oh, is. Look at that, someone set up a, a roadblock. Well, what do we got? Yeah, see, the, to oh, me that would be a bad, would, yeah, and pasta. I mean, to me yeah. this would be a, a major find. And a lot of times you find matches in the back, so... Man, I have never once in the whole time I've played DayZ found matches. Once. Never. Yeah? No. Really? Nope. I remember we were all excited because we had matches and we met up and then we spawned and somebody murdered everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no. Yeah, the, I'm so glad though. Like, uh, you know, when I, when I, anybody I've ever talked to that says doesn't understand why I'd like to play the game where I can be murdered at will by a player. I just, I feel like. Uh, I think it. As well, if you can right-click on that M911 mag. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the one below it there. Oh, you can only combine it for the revolver yeah. at the moment. That's, you can go the other way, too. But I, I, I thought for a minute, I forgot that it's 45. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you could take the ammo. Yeah. I'm running away from the zombies. So, a lot of times you find matches back here. Or, oh, a compass, I'll take that. You're getting so lucky. I've only ever found a compass once. And this is us this is the spot where I normally find matches. Not today, but yeah. Um, you got a Macroff mag. Mm -hmm. Right, if you die, well, watch I'm going to cry because you're really well looted. So head out the back, head right, uh, run along this road uh, to the right. Hard right. Okay. And see that red building? Head yep. into that red building. You'll that be able one? to run inside that door. This one, right? Yeah. Uh, you'll probably find some loot in here, but I wouldn't linger too long. Your aim is going to be to head to the fire station. Oh, what? Hello. Well, we say that like it's a good thing, but honestly, a shotgun in my mind is really overrated in this game. Like, I'll take it. Just in case. I, oh, of course. I'm not saying you shouldn't take it, but I'm saying a shotgun is like to oh, me. Oh, Makarov makes. Oh man, this is such a good spawn. Uh, is like a to me, it's like such a good thing if you. Great, you want to go and grab both those mags. There were two mags there. Yeah. Yeah. Go back and grab a mag. I will, I will. We're, we're getting way too into this. This is what happens. <laughs> this is why normally, uh, yeah, like I can't I can't actually play and interview at the same time because. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I whatever. Oh, a fire station. So uh, run to your left. Left behind this red building. And oh, yeah, uh, look for a gap under the fence. Yep. And so once you get close, crawl under. See, playing with you is like playing with uh, the, like, like you're like the seasoned survivor who's been surviving in this horrible city for like yeah. six months. And we're and like that back door there on the left. <laughs> yeah. We but just watch need out. food. You're probably going to want to switch to the double barrel, even though you've only got two shots. Because uh, inside, your chances of hitting them are going to be pretty low. So, Okay. Do you think people are going to be in here? Or no. Zombies? No. I mean, uh, Oh, the, hey, this okay. is the room where in our other uh, Let's Play, oh, there you we, go. Oh, yeah. you got a, we all got blown up in this room together. So we're actually, with the standalone, uh, we're having, like, it's a, this is a bit of a technical thing, but, like, uh, the weapons and the ammunition themselves are separate entities. So it's very object-orientated, which it's not at the moment in armor, and that's where some of our problems come from. So uh, that gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of approach and implementation that we're really looking forward to. You're finding ammo. Like Actually, grab that. Uh, if you grab that ammunition, that eight round, 
No, you probably don't want the 17. The 45. Just grab the M... Uh, you probably don't want the 45, actually. Uh, the 8 round? Yeah. For the shoddy? Yeah, because you can actually change that into a uh, 2 round. Um, it's following the rudimentary... Um, yeah, but you probably don't want to do that unless you had enough slots, because I think... Oh, you're right. Now uh, wasted. Cool. Uh, yeah. I know, this is the problem with the Coyote backpack. It, it's... Uh, it's very limited. Alice pack, I've only ever found one of those once, and it was such a great day. Uh, what's the biggest pack? I don't know. Uh, I think the Alice pack. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. No, sure there's one. Alice oh, pack. the check back pack. Okay, so yeah, you don't want to engage those guys. Um, you could probably have cra crash walk, but crawling's fine, I guess. So, you yeah. want me to fight him? No, definitely don't. <laughs> You're in Cherno. You fire that thing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like, uh, you want me to fire the shotgun? Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can crouch, uh, crouch run. Like I, I generally uh, allow myself to crouch, run, and um, not not sprint, just crouch, like run, run. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, you're right. Uh, now I would usually go to. You're not really tooled up, so I would go to a pub. There's a pub on your right if you head right. Over here. Yeah. Oh man, this is a great tour of Cherno. I always just kind of wander and, and hope for the best. And like crossing rivers, you should always cross uh, r roads perpendicular um, because it's the shortest shortest uh, path. Shortest path. And then you're going to want to head along by that wall on the road side of it. But you're going to have to crawl around the edge, I guess. It's it's uh, it's interesting to me playing with you because uh, you know everything so you well. You're going to go on the other side of the wall so that you're closest. I'm sure that you've looked at this map like you know more times than you can remember. Yeah, but it's funny how, how much military tactics I try to want to apply to it. So it's the same with urban operations. You know, you need to put barriers between you and yourself. So by crossing over here, all you, you, you know that on your right is you're fairly secure from because there's a wall. you have the wall and also you have the road. So that means all you need to, and you're going to want to head right here. Um, and so you can stick running along the edge. Oh, you've got guys there. So oh, no, now you're going to have to lose them. Uh, your best bet, because you're pretty close, you're not going to want to fight, is to run around the building. Yeah, and then head right again. And then weave around the other side of that wall. Oh, he's going to see me. It's all right. And then head right again okay? uh, around the other side of that. Yeah, that direction. You can check inside these sheds here, too. Ah, oh, they're still following me. Oh, God, Dustin. No, yeah. Dustin. Right. Uh, you, your best bet now is to go into a pub because you're in the main square. So head straight, head straight. I'm going to go into that hotel. Uh, yeah, that's probably a death trap because they'll all wait outside <laughs> there. <laughs> I think you're probably going to head right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's it's so interesting playing with you because you know the map oh so well. Cause, uh, for, a long time, for a long time, me and Dustin <laughs> tried not to play with a map. Like, we wouldn't go to a wiki yeah. or anything like that because we were like, no, oh I, my just, I, I just want to try <laughs> and sort uh, it out for myself. Head slightly right. Yeah. Down this... And then uh, left, 45, yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I should probably go upstairs. Yeah, go upstairs as quickly just... as you can. Uh, I don't think you have the room, Whoa, Dustin. What? Getting you. What? Get the... Turn around Get and out. shoot Dustin. Oh, move. This is such a horrible Last idea. Last stand. <laughs> hey, it's a double-barreled shotgun, so... Oh, Dustin. No. Oh. I, would, I would run if I were you. Yeah, I, I would. Dustin's dead. <laughs> like we can we can tell him to run at this point. Whisper kick. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I think whisper I, I kick. I think he can make it. Um, oh, he's in such pain though. And you also r didn't run outside, Dustin. Wow, well, you're really low on. Uh, you what? changed to Makarov here, I think. It'll be okay. It's gonna be okay, you guys. Uh, eat, eat some food. Yeah, I was gonna say eat some beans. Yeah. We've just completely abandoned the interview at this point. We're I'm sorry. Just so I'm sorry. Focused on it's it's fine. Well, we I figured our let's plays are usually a combination of both. Exactly. Oh, and then Talking I die. About the game oh no, you're not dead. You're just uh, passed out. Uh, fainting. Yeah, passed yeah, yeah. out. Oh, now I'm, I'm going to be dead. Oh, well, wow. Dustin's character thought that she could play dead while the zombies came <laughs> in and just <laughs> actually play dead was uh, something I looked at. I've looked at doing. Um, luckily, they haven't seen you now. They, they, what they've done is they've investigated where you are. So mm -hmm. once you come back too, you can probably crawl out. Although I think one of them is eating you. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Just pretend I'm dead. Just get the fuck out of here, Dustin. Oh, damn it. I think you're shooting on the ah. other side of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're really low on blood here. 
<sighs> well, I'll just let him eat me, and then we can respawn with the dog again. You could throw some red for that red face. We know last five. So. What is happening? <laughs> What's going on is that your character is losing her mind. You're flying Darn through it. his buttocks. <laughs> there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> Ferns. Ferns. Well, that wasn't a tremendous success. I mean, we, the thing is, is that we've ruined it perfectly. If this was like a real game, I'd be so infuriated yeah. with Destin right now. <laughs> For ru right. like, he had like so much good stuff. I would have made him not stop playing until he went and found his body. Exactly. Oh man. Where's the dog? Oh no. He's here. You just He's like there. right beside you. Oh okay. Yeah. You probably need to change your FO. Your FO V. All right. Let's play normally. Oh man. Well, is it painful to watch me play, Dean? A little bit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, no insult intended, but I think my little sister plays better. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, she's pretty good, so. Really? Yeah. I mean, how's how's it been? Uh, like, uh, do your family have a good understanding of what it is you actually do? I find when I tell my family, they're like, so you make games, right? And I'm like, no. Yeah, right. see, I, I prefer my, uh, I, I prefer the term participants, you know, for people who are playing DayZ who call, who call themselves fans. But my mom is literally, like, a fan. So she tells me, like, when articles go up and stuff like that. Does she save the clippings and all that? I don't know if she, no, she's, like, completely tech savvy. Oh, okay, well, yeah. that's rad. So, um, yeah, she, you know, like, her and my dad, they, they're, like, totally tech savvy. Oh, man. Nothing's really going on, Destin. I know. I'm like, my heart's like beating and stuff. <laughs> if I was playing by myself, on. this is how I would be playing, yeah. seriously, at all times during the day. I just like crawl everywhere. I mean, it's like that, uh, it's like that recent YouTube video that went up the, 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 uh, stuff uh, Daisy players Oh, they say. were just brilliant. And, 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 you know, it was talking, and the guy talks about, like, why does anyone play this? It's so boring. Yeah. And then he it's immediately like, oh launches, god. oh, my god, oh, my god, oh, my yeah. god. That's the whole thing is that, like, yeah, whenever I play Daisy, I'm like, there could be a session where it goes by, and my the highlight of my day was finding a piece of food. And then there are other times where I come to Destin, and I'm like, all right, so I ran into these two guys who spoke no English, but we communicated by doing kicks and over and over each other again. And... and and we uh, we started trading food and sharing things. And also, like, I love the sort of dynamics that develop amongst players. Like, uh, when you meet someone with a gun, it's uh, I love how there's like a certain sort of uh, language that develops. Yeah. Uh, like you like you know someone has decided to trust you if they ever like turn their back on you. Friendly, yeah. friendly, Whereas, like, friendly, a lot of, friendly. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm just saying like a lot of people with guns, even if they've decided like friendly, friendly, they still face each other with their guns out. Rather than like approaching each other and being and you know actually wanting to, uh, you know, turn their back on each other because someone could potentially just kill you and take all your really great gear. Yeah. Like, like generally, in my experience, all the players with the really amazing weapons they don't turn their backs. Yeah. On people, you know. So Dean, in in the long run, is the dog gonna affect your visibility? Uh, the dog has its own visibility value. Mm -hmm. At the moment, though, it's not linked up, so the the zombies don't tie into it. It's because of the way that. Uh, like Daisy kind of turns everything on its head so you have uh, normally with armor it's calculated on, oh yeah crowbar <laughs> actually crowbar is my favorite like is just, it it is even though it's it's kind of useless and that's a bit of a balance issue uh, but I just love you should definitely get your crowbar out and make him a new like ear hole I was gonna say I mean I, I like the oh, you crowbar, need to, yeah, but if go. I can get the axe I'm all about the axe so does this is this actually do any damage now yeah. Yeah. You should walk up to him and you can do a stealth kill. Or you can just break his legs. You I think that's sick, already. man. I think he's dead. He's already dead. I don't think he is. Hit him oh. again. Oh, oh my god. He, of now course. he's got, It was like. That was, was like. a clever ruse. <laughs> I was going to say that was like a horror movie moment where you're like, I think he's dead. And then yeah. you get up close to him and he's like, <laughs> raw. I'll take your tin can. Yeah, yeah, that, that was definitely worth it for the tin can. You're you also still need bleeding. To bleed your, uh, uh. Yeah, I, I love the I love the user. We keep saying it, but it needs to be said a lot. Like the user created stuff is really awesome that comes out. Yeah, I mean, and I, that's why I want to add all this depth to things because I think just like if if all this is achievable with a very small amount of depth to the game at the moment, then imagine what we can achieve if we add a lot more depth to it. Where'd my dog go? Well, what sort of things do you see uh, 
you know, as far as like adding depth, like are. besides what we've already talked hey, about. Uh, well, I think uh, a, a lot of more social aspects that we want to come out. So, um, you know, one thing is I'd really like to figure out a way, and I haven't really thought about how to do this, to have, have it so that players do specialize to an extent without getting into this whole putting tree points in a tree and stuff like that. So an example being one area that I've started to think about is durability of, of the weapons and things like that. Uh, what, the more you work at it, the better you get at it, to the point maybe your character becomes very good at it and can help others and things like that. I was like going to say, you could become known as the gunsmith. Yeah. But I don't want to force those mechanics too much. Sure. I really like it how there's, you know that guy, Dr. Wasteland, and everyone knows he's a doctor. We don't really want to have some kind of skill tree. But I think this is going to become very necessary for repairing vehicles uh, and creating vehicles. So that, you know, if you want to build a wreck up of a helicopter, then you need to find someone who is knowledgeable about that. And one way we've thought about doing it is have that uh, players can do that them, you know, through experience of, of doing it, you know, beforehand. Or they can learn it socially. So we've talked about social learning, socially learned skills. Um, as uh, as one method of doing it, another way of encouraging people to you know group up, a and another example as we talked about, uh, one permanent solution for bleeding and stuff like that. So you you suffer an, a bleeding injury and you can temporarily fix it with a bandage, but to permanently solve serious wounds, you'll need to visit someone who's skilled at suturing and stuff like that. Oh man, that would be so brutal. I mean, just to have to you know because. I mean, in real life, I, I guess, you know, cuts and stuff would are much more of a threat yeah. when there is no regular medical attention than yeah, they are. Yeah, serious threat. Like, uh, I remember this from my survival training, like just getting a, cutting yourself with a knife could become a life-threatening very quickly, uh, not even just from tetanus, but just from standard infections and sepsis and stuff like that. Sure, the type of stuff that we all take for granted yeah. on a daily basis because we're like, you know, we'll spread some Bactine in it or take yeah. some antibiotics and we're good to go. We're talking with my brother as well, the virologist, Dr. Richard Hall. So bringing him, him on board to develop the science behind the virus and things like that and providing the kind of tools that a, a, you know, a biologist, a, a microbiologist, like he said, as a virologist would use um, in the field so that you can actually find those tools and research and find out about the virus yourself um, and things like that. So we just want to add these different avenues that... Uh, Obviously, not all players are going to take, but that if they want to, are there. So that you can really just... I guess the kind of game that I'd want to play. So when I go into this game, I'm the kind of person who plays the game how I would kind of see myself doing it in real life. That's not for everybody, but, you know, that's uh, that's how some people want to play it. And I think it should support that ability. Totally. I think we've kind of... Uh... Hey, hey, Dean, so when does this uh, take place? Time-wise, yeah. Do you have like a date? Or anything? Uh, well, I think present day. Uh, oh. I think that's important for immersion. Oh, I did not um, mean to stand up. Darn it! You know that's really important, and I think we're going to have to grow a lot of these aspects as the project goes forward. Oh man! I really don't want us to get too into narrative. Like I think it's important that you know the, the story is the to come from the player, and I think having different regions for Daisy would be really important going forward. So, you know, American maps, European maps, uh, Pacific maps. So that you feel like you're playing in your own backyard yeah, or something exactly. like that. And I am a big fan of urban areas, would be awesome. And absolutely terrifying when you have no sight lines and stuff. Yeah, again, it's something we've talked about doing instance-wise. So, uh, like one area that I really want to do uh, is like a big mall. And so the outside model exists in the world, but when you go in it, we can do it like Skyrim does with it. goes into a separate interior instance, uh, complete with, like, parking garage and everything, I think would be really awesome. I think uh, we should probably wrap it up here, Destin. Yeah. As we're approaching Chernogorsk for the third time, only to inevitably <laughs> march to our death, as we seem to be so apt at doing. Thanks for playing us with us, though, Dean, and letting me uh, check out the dog and what he's up to. Yeah, he's still pretty basic. Uh, Good job, Dog 1. You didn't die three times. Dog 2. Dog 3. This is Dog 3 now. We don't this know they died. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what comes along with the uh, the mod going forward and definitely the standalone. Yeah. For more on DayZ, keep it locked on IGN.